Welcome graduates, faculty, staff, family, and friends. I am Audrey Bilger, president of Reed College, and I am delighted to be with you here and to share this beautiful celebration. <laughs> this is a day for rejoicing to honor our graduates and to give thanks to all of those who have cheered them along the way. I want to begin by thanking the loved ones who have nurtured and sustained this year's class through hardships and triumphs. Parents, siblings, close friends, you have hoped and dreamed of this day for our students. They could not have done this without you. Let us all give you a hearty round of applause. Let us now thank the staff who labor mightily and with great skill and dedication to ensure that the college runs smoothly. During the time that the class of 2024 has been here, our staff have risen to unimaginable challenges. Huge gratitude and applause for the Reed College staff. Next, I would ask the faculty, if you are able, to stand to receive thanks. I want everyone to see where you are. Stand. And I have, I have some words. We, we are grateful for all you have done to make this day possible for our graduates. Over these past four years, you have gone above and beyond what anyone could have expected to teach under some of the most difficult conditions imaginable. Your brilliance, passion, and fortitude are inspiring. Once again, let's hear it for the faculty. And please be seated. And now I invite our graduating seniors to stand. <laughs> Class of 2024, you are amazing. For those who arrived on campus in the fall of 2020, you were entering unknown territory, not just for Reed, but for the world as a whole. Many of you were unable to travel, and so you started college remotely, whether in person, remote, hybrid, or even quarantined. You have been brave and caring. You have persevered against strong odds. Applause for the truly extraordinary class of 2024. Please be seated. As we all know, 2020 was a year of disruption and uncertainty. Your senior year of high school was cut short you missed out on graduation ceremonies and festivities. I can only imagine how anxious you were then about what would happen next. I can tell you that we planned for your arrival throughout that summer. Our goal was to keep Reed whole and healthy and to bring you here so that you could learn and grow in this remarkable community. When we began that fall semester, we were all fully aware of how precious our time together would be. That first year was far from easy. We wore masks, practiced social distancing, tested for COVID again and again and again and again and again. 
There were classroom and dining tents, plexiglass in offices, windows open and social spaces closed. Every week was a victory. Through it all, you were magnificent. I hope you can find time in the coming weeks to take stock of what you have accomplished and recognize how much power you have. As you pack and unpack, time travel over the past years and find some of the landmarks that guided you. Recall how we had to be ready to pivot to adjust at a moment's notice to new conditions. We were forced to live in the here and now even when it could be mind-numbingly boring at times. In Emily Dickinson's words, we were forced to dwell in possibility. I, for one, was and remained sustained by my faith in the value of lifelong learning and my abiding belief in Reed as a place of curiosity and inspiration. I also find strength in gratitude. At our most challenging times, I know that we are seeking together to improve this college and the world, and when we are open to learning, we are open to change. I am grateful to all of you for what you have brought to read. You were the class we planned and prepared for. We were intentional even in the midst of uncertainty. Now, as you go off to build your next adventures, I hope you know that we believe in you and we send you off with love. Congratulations, Reed College graduates. Good morning. I'm Roger Perlmutter. It is my privilege to chair the Board of Trustees of Reed College. And on behalf of the Reed Institute, I welcome everyone here to the 2024 commencement. From the perspective of the Board of Trustees, 2020, the year of your entrance, as Audrey has already said, was a year fraught with peril. We made the decision to conduct classes at Reed when most colleges steered away. I was convinced then that the entering students and the students who were already here at the time could abide by the restrictions necessary to ensure that there was little or no on-campus transmission of COVID-19. People thought we were nuts. But you did it. When I reflect upon my own graduation, I hate to say it, 51 years ago, um, it was a walk in the park by comparison. You faced an astonishing challenge. And in the process, Reed College and the Reed Campus became the safest place, not only in Portland, but likely in all of Oregon, to avoid transmission of the coronavirus. Okay, if you did nothing else, you should feel very proud of that. <laughs> but you did a great deal more besides. And you've made your families proud of you. And you've embarked upon new careers that will have meaning. And on behalf of the Board of Trustees, we're grateful to have had the opportunity to share this with you. Welcome to all the families. Congratulations to the graduating seniors. Thank you. Congratulations, Reedies. Welcome to a new era. You were a student for about four years, but you'll be a member of the Reed College Alumni Association for the rest of your life. This means there are thousands of people out there rooting for you. We're proud of you. 
We want to help you. I myself had my freshman year in Woodbridge, studied political science, my thesis advisor, Peter Steinberger. I spent a number of hours, let's just say, in the pool hall and um, had uh, some Ren fair experiences. Uh, <laughs> And after 29 years, if you ask me, and we we'll can talk about this at the reception, if you ask me, 29 years later, I can still tell you the title of my senior thesis. Because this place stays with you. We're a small school. When Reed alumni get a phone call or an email from a current student or a recent graduate, we try to do our best to respond promptly and help any way we can. I'll often refer students or alumni to a friend I know who's in that specialty. We try to help because we know what it was like to experience this place. Across the country, there are 11 alumni chapters who create in-person social events so alumni of all generations can get together and share their mutual interests. The alumni board, which I'm currently president of, brings alumni together through three committees that allow alumni to have a venue to share our interests and, and explore our common bond and support one another. Diversity and Inclusion, the Reed Career Alliance, and the Committee for Young Alumni. You get to be involved there for 10 years. Just the other day, I was telling a, a good friend about the role that alumni volunteers play in our community. I said, alumni volunteers talk to strangers and ask them how they would like to help another group of strangers over there. And the thing that unites these three sets of people are we all went to Reed College here in Southeast Portland. I thought it was really smart when I came up with that. My friend uh, Kathy Satis, who's been on the staff for a number of years, said, Dylan, you know, that's not quite right. Because when Reedies talk to Reedies, they're not talking to strangers. All Reedies are part of the same family. Yes, I get it. We are like, we're all in the same family. We're like cousins who just haven't yet had a chance to meet. Well, hello, cousins. Nice to meet you. The read um, I went to is a little different. You know, families, they say families have secrets, and I'm going to tell you one of mine. The read I went to in the early 90s was not nearly as good as the read you went to just now. The read you experienced was better in many ways than the read of the 90s. The students now are more successful, more apt to graduate. They have more internship opportunities, more research opportunities. Reed has a more diverse student body, faculty, and curriculum than any time in its history, and we are all better off for that. I salute the faculty who made some hard decisions over the years to help make all this happen. The Reed staff are hardworking and dedicated. And Reed students and alumni have helped make Reed better too. In the early 90s, it was the Reed students who founded the Multicultural Resource Center. Reed students pushed for some long needed changes to the curriculum. And I know you will continue to push to make the world a better place and to make Reed a better place for generations to come. <laughs> Reedies are constantly pushing to make ourselves and our institution that we love better. And sometimes we can get a little intense about it. Just last week, someone kind of set me off. They said, hey, Dylan, um, 
I heard that you're a former Reedy. Is that right? Former Reedy. It was like, it sounded like nails on a, fingernails on a chalkboard to me. Former Reedy. I said, listen, partner, I'm a Reedy, and there's nothing former about it. When you go to Reed College, you're a Reedy for life. As a Reedy, you get to meet some wonderful people. I can tell you some of my best friends in life went to Reed not at the same time as me. They went to Reed 10, 20, 30 years before I did. If you get a chance to meet someone from 65, check them out. <laughs> Add some characters. Uh, as a lifelong Reedy, we talk about Reed quite a bit. And I found some things that tend to unite us, some common experiences. I think back to the end of a cold, dark Portland winter. We had a, a rare, sunny Saturday in Portland. And on that rare, sunny Saturday, I was walking a, a friend who was visiting uh, through the library and there are those comfy chairs, you know, in the library, in the atrium. Sunlight was pouring through the windows. And every one of those chairs was filled with a Reed student, reading a book, solving a problem. There were students in the labs solving a challenging problem. Students with their laptops finishing a paper. I was one of those readies. You were one of those readies. You know what, in 10 years, the class of 2034, they will be those readies as well. And I want you to think as I do. When the opportunity arises to meet alumni, to meet current students, think of those readies in the library on a sunny day. Offer your best advice. Connect them with someone who can help. In fact, you know, there's something we can do to inspire the next generation of readies right now. Um, I'm gonna go off script for a second. Staff always get a little nervous when I say that. Uh, <laughs> you know, the class of 2034, they're gonna arrive here in about six years. It occurred to me that they are currently in middle school, many of them right? It's kind of a hard time. They might wonder, am I able to get through Hume 110? Am I able to get through a junior qual? Am I able to do a senior thesis? So I want us to encourage them. Please join me in taking a selfie for the class of 2020, 2034. Raise your hand. Raise your hand and wave. Let's all wave at the class of 2034. Come on, let's do it. Do it with me. Thank you. Thank you, Reedies. Thank you for thinking of the Reedies of the future. We are all Reedies. Thank you for that. Thank you in advance for updating your IRIS profile in the alumni directory. You know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm talking about? So the Reedies of the future can reach you for advice. And so the Reedies of yesterday can reach out to you to invite you to a chapter event to a reunion and at the reunion you're not just going to see the people here sitting next to you you're going to meet readies from 10 20 years ago and guess what readies who graduated after you did and we will continue to learn from each other and support each other we'll continue to support the annual fund to support financial aid for the next generation of readies and we will be readies for a lifetime. Congratulations. Thank you.
Doom, 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 Dr. Sasha Kramer, who graduated from Reed in 1999 with a degree in biology, is an ecologist and human rights advocate 
who has been living and working in Haiti since 2004. She founded the nonprofit SOIL, Sustainable Organic Integrated Livelihood, an ecological sanitation aid group in Haiti. She is a global advocate for the recycling of nutrients in human waste, inspiring people around the world to participate in the sanitation revolution. She received her PhD in ecology from Stanford University in 2006. Among numerous awards and accolades, she is the recipient of the 2017 Sarfati Sanitation Award for Lifetime Achievement. When Sasha spoke at Reed's centennial celebration, she said, Reed taught me that the root of genius is passion. I was lucky to meet so many passionate geniuses at Reed. It gives me great pleasure to introduce this passionate Reedy genius, Dr. Sasha Kramer. Good morning, everyone. As I look out at all of you beautiful, passionate geniuses, I'm really glad someone gave me some tissues before this talk because this is a very emotional day. I'm also a little short. It is such a privilege and an honor to be here, and I'm grateful to the Student Selection Committee and the college for inviting me. How wonderful that this speech gives me the precious opportunity to acknowledge some of the very special people in my life, some of whom I am lucky enough to have here today, and some who always walk with me in spirit, no matter where in the world they may be. I want to start by acknowledging my family while being sensitive to the fact that we all define family differently. Some of us have had the good fortune to have our birth family to thank for our life circumstances, and others have our chosen family. If I am where I am today, it is thanks to both, and it is important for me to honor that. For me, commencement is a day of celebrating your individual achievements while remembering and acknowledging the people and experiences that have helped you to become who you are today. A Reed College graduate, commencing a new phase of your life as a global citizen. I first want to acknowledge my mom and dad, who are not able to be here today for health reasons, but will surely be watching this from afar. I stand here today because from a young age, they taught me that compassion and kindness were as important as ambition and intellect. I stand here today because of their unshakable faith in me. Believing in someone is the greatest gift that you can ever give, and I am so thankful to my family for believing in me. And to all of the parents in the audience today, thank you for believing in your children. I know many of you worked so hard to make this day possible. And now that I am a parent myself, I know how deeply moving these milestones are. I also want to acknowledge all of you in this room. First of all, some of you voted to have me here, which is extremely humbling and deeply motivating. You may not know this, but in choosing me as your commencement speaker, you are pushing me to live up to that honor. Knowing that such a brilliant, inspired group of young minds hope to find value in what I came here to share makes me aspire to be twice the person I was yesterday. Your vote of confidence in me makes me want to work harder, dream bigger, and be stronger. You may sense in that sentence the respect that I have for all of you and for this institution. And you may also sense a feeling, which I'm sure many of you are familiar with, the niggling shame of imposter syndrome, that feeling that somehow you have hoodwinked the world and don't actually deserve the praise, the respect, or the accolades that you have worked so hard to earn. I need to do a little bit of a solidarity check here. How many of you sitting in this room today have sometimes questioned whether you deserve to be here. Can I see a show of hands? 
Come on, my people, you have to have felt this at some moment. What I want you to think about right now, all of you, at, not at this moment, at this moment you should feel nothing but pride, but you'll have moments, and when you have them, I want you to think about someone that you love and admire deeply. Do you question their worth with the same intensity and impossible standards that you apply to yourself? Remember, for most of you in this room who have worked so hard to get here, you will always be your own harshest critic. I say this to remind myself as well. Try to be as kind to yourself as you are to those who you admire most, especially today. I know how much hard work and dedication it took to bring you to this day, and I have no doubt that you deserve to be here. So please give yourselves a round of applause. Mm. Today is a day to celebrate your achievements over the past four years, but it is also a day to look forward into the future. You don't have to know where your life path will take you. I certainly didn't when I sat where you are now. But I hope in the next few minutes to share some of the guiding principles that I've learned in my own life, which have helped me choose which way to go when the road forks. And believe you me, I have made many a wrong turn. But there are some core values, some of which I learned here at Reed, and many of which have come from my life experience in Haiti, which have helped me to course correct when I take a wrong turn. Did I learn the hard skills that I needed to do the work that I'm doing now at Reed? No, I didn't. But what I did learn was how to trust in my own capacity to learn. Reed taught me that with dedication, passion, and the humility to learn from others, we can learn to do almost anything. In my case, with the exception of feats of physical prowess, that's a little outside my comfort zone, never gonna learn those things. <laughs> 10 years from now, and maybe already, most of you will not remember the chemical formula for a specific protein, or that famous philosopher's quote that you could recite from memory. But what you will remember is how to think critically about divisive issues, how to apply discipline and creativity to build your understanding of new concepts, and how to reward yourself appropriately when you have pushed yourself to the limit to achieve your goal. If you are sitting here today, then I have full confidence in your capacity to learn whatever you need to learn to fulfill your passion. I want to talk to you now about Haiti, a country that I have called home for more than a third of my life. Haiti has at times been my greatest teacher, my harshest critic, my deepest joy, my most acute heartache, and through it all, my most powerful inspiration. I first went to Haiti in 2004 as a human rights observer with much the same trepidation that I felt when I was first invited to join you today. I had no idea what it meant to be a human rights observer, but I knew it was something I'd always wanted to be. Similarly, I have no idea how to be a commencement speaker, but I knew that an invitation like this from the educational institution that changed the course of my life would be an honor I could only dream of attaining. I had wanted to visit Haiti since I was a teenager, reading novels by Edwidge Dandicott. I was, and to this day remain, inspired by the country's historical significance as home to the first successful slave revolution. I wanted to better understand how such a small country could forever change the course of global history. And I would never have had the courage to go to Haiti. Now's when I might cry without my dearest friend, Zoe Moskowitz, my plus one, my number one, who I met at Reed, who has joined me here today. And I, yay, Zoe. <laughs> yay, best friends. Oh. 
Zoe and I went to Haiti to accompany pro-democracy demonstrators who were seeking international observers as they demonstrated against a repressive coup regime. I fell in love with Haiti and never left, and Zoe left and never came back, <laughs> and then went on to become one of my greatest heroines, working here in Portland as a hospice nurse, bringing comfort to families in their time of greatest need, and reminding me that we all have our own special superpower. And to make true positive change in this world, we need a diversity of superpowers. I spend a lot of time talking about poop. And I'm, I'm, not, I'm sorry to disappoint you, I'm not going to talk about poop very much today. But, 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 I do want to speak about it more with any of you who are interested in talking poop. And along those lines, I've made a special limited edition soil sticker that you can pick up when you turn in your robe, which is in a color it will never be printed again. This is for the class of 2024 of Reed. Never going to be worth much to anyone except those of us in this room today. It is a token of my belief in you and it is a way to contact me if you'd like to get to know me better. But today, it's refreshing to stand before you and not talk about the details of what I do, but rather share with you some of the ways in which my time in Haiti and my work with Haitian communities has shaped my worldview. I want to talk about what Haiti has taught me about empathy, perspective, and perseverance. I first went to Haiti trained as a scientist. Much of my academic training focused on objective observation, but Haiti quickly taught me that emotional intelligence, the ability to empathize with others, no matter how painful, was the most valuable tool for building the relationships that are pivotal for making change. Remember this, Reedies. The most brilliant intellectual argument can never be won without understanding and relating to those whose experience is different from your own. Haiti has also given me perspective. We all face our own personal demons and challenges. However, on my darkest days, I am inspired to keep pushing forward by the everyday heroism of my team, who literally walk through burning roadblocks to ensure sanitation to families cut off by insecurity. And Haiti has taught me perseverance. It has reminded me that the work of equity is the work of generations. Undoing centuries of inequality is a lifetime commitment, and it requires a dedication that takes strength in small victories and the tenacity to persist in the face of immeasurable setbacks. And finally, and perhaps most concretely, Haiti has given me my family, quite literally, in the sense that I met my husband, Anthony, in 2010 at a very romantic government sanitation meeting. <laughs> we shared a commitment to justice, a passion for social engagement, and he just plain makes me laugh. And now we share a son, Biko, who has grown up with an exposure to the breadth of humanity that I experienced only as an adult. It is my privilege to watch him wrestle with the complexity of his experience and to see the ways in which it shapes him. And Haiti has given me my chosen family, my friends, my colleagues, my mentors, for which I will be eternally grateful. As I wrap up, I would like to say that I have never been more appreciative of the gift of education than I am these past years. As I stand before you today, millions of school children in Haiti, in Gaza, in Ukraine, in Sudan, and many other conflict zones around the world are facing uncertain educational futures with their schools cut shut down due to insecurity. In a world where education should be a right, but remains a privilege, I want to remind you that while this privilege does come with tremendous responsibility, it also brings with it an incredible opportunity. The opportunity to use your privilege and education to make a difference in the lives of others. 
And I can tell you that if you choose to use your knowledge and service to humanity, your own life and the lives of those you love will be so much richer for it. We can choose to contribute to social change in our own ways. Some of us will change the world through teaching, like the amazing faculty before me today, as Dave Dalton, Del Rhodes, Steve Black, Bob Kaplan, and others did for me so many years ago. As Noelle Natusil continues to do, sending me some of her best and brightest students. <laughs> Big drop up. All of these professors have stayed in touch and have contributed to Soil's work. And for me, there is no deeper compliment. Or you can change the world through parenting, like all of you parents out here, as my mother and father did for me, and as I hope to do for our son. Some, like the tireless waste treatment team that I work with, will change the world by living their lives on the front lines of the struggle. And for others, like myself, we will have the opportunity to support change through accompaniment, be it financial or practical. For me, there has been no greater satisfaction in life than walking with others on the path of justice. I can't close without saying that our organization, Soil, would never be what it is today without the amazing contributions of fellow Reedies. Thank you, Leah Jean, Molly Case, Shannon Smith, and Claire Remington for moving to Haiti and sharing your brilliance and compassion with Soil. Since Soil's founding, Reedies have contributed a cumulative 28 years to our work. And merci d'avance, thank you in advance, to those of you in the audience today who may choose to share your brilliance with Soil in years to come. Please hit me up. Finally, I salute the students across the country and right here on campus who are directly engaging with the most devastating and delicate issues of our time. Someone asked me the other day, if I was a student right now, would I add my voice to the calls for an end to the structural and military violence in the Middle East? And though I am no longer a student, I thank you for giving me a chance as a Jewish American, a mother, an ecologist, and someone who believes that access to basic human rights should never be used as a weapon of war. I stand with those around the world calling for a ceasefire in the Israel-Gaza conflict and the immediate provision of humanitarian aid. But I also salute those of you who are not out in the streets, but are fighting to understand the world through self-reflection and thoughtful, respectful dialogue. And I salute all of you who are still becoming accustomed to your own power, waiting to wield it when the time is right. Congratulations, class of 2024, for all you have done and what you have yet to do. Thank you. Will the candidates of the Division of the Arts please rise?
Madam President, I present for the degree of Bachelor of Arts the candidates both present and in absentia of the Division of the Arts. Upon the recommendation of the faculty of Reed College and by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees, I hereby confer upon the students of this division the degree of Bachelor of Arts with all the rights and privileges thereunto appertaining. Andrew Bales. Jamie Anderson Belden. Air Brady. Aniela Gramada Coig. Emily Dacchiardi. Simca Laramie Apricot Einhorn. Hugh Elman. Liam Goodwin Four. Mallory Graves. <laughs> Mike? Okay. Olivia Kyungwon Lee. <laughs> Ramona Livy. <laughs> Gregory Alexander Mack. Milo Martinez. <laughs> Rachel Maudlin. <laughs> Sid Rosen Perrette. <laughs> Jody Reed. Silas Rock. <laughs> Elias Cisneros. <laughs> Rivi Yermish. <laughs> Safi Mila Bukayo Zenger. Sasha Zubieta. Will the graduates please be seated? Will the candidates of the Division of History and Social Sciences please rise? Madam President, I present for the degree of Bachelor of Arts the candidates both president, present and in abstentia of the Division of History and Social Sciences. Upon the recommendation of the faculty of Reed College and by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees, I hereby confer upon the students of this division the degree of Bachelor of Arts with all the rights and privileges thereunto appertaining. Ariana Helena Aguirre.
Songbom Simon An. Elisa Olivia Almanza. Brayden Barkley. Casador Barnum. Isaiah Beanhauer. Grace Benson. Eliezer Burke. Emma Bramson. Sophia Renee Brisbane. Hayden Brothers. Rohan Yaga Bugana. Josie Burns. Leslie Contreras Romero. Matthew Cromas. <laughs> Declan Hayne Cruz. <laughs> Ellen Curry. <laughs> Arun Borua Das. Portland Doris. <laughs> Zoe Drajum. <laughs> Raven Duclos. <laughs> Abigail Durant. Eva Gallardo Gar Garcia. <laughs> Natasha Camille Gasquier. <laughs> Hannah Danae Goodman. <laughs> Laurel Gray. Sanan Gran. <laughs> Martin Gu Wang Tao. <laughs> Annika Hartsock. <laughs> Catherine Naomi Herberg <laughs> Olivia Hicks <laughs> Cecilia Claire Janizeski <laughs> Oliver Sol Jordan Yong Jun Jung. <laughs> Kim Soon. <laughs> Buckminster Keen. <laughs> Ar 
Ari Lebov Goldfarb. Kwani Fon Catherine Marcelle. Gabriel May. Meng Yuxuan. Michael Miller. Nat Woodrow Wildcat Mills. Elizabeth Organ. Sienna Otero. Mona Pan Ching. Cornelia Soma Pen. <laughs> Olivia Phillips. <laughs> Maria Jose Quintana Rodriguez. <laughs> Greta Plantinga Regan. Anna Romo. Yeah. Reese Schaffer. Yeah. Kellen Sinkoff. Yeah. Sarvodaya Singh. Megan Julianne Young So. Tyler West Stephen Scanlon. Wei Sung. Zonia Junyu Tanada. Walker Cooper Toss. <laughs> Rafael Torres. <laughs> Lillian Valencich. Martina Valle. Isaac Walton. Dashiell Ward. Aiden N. White. Jackie Wu Zhe Huan. Will the graduates please be seated?
Will the candidates of the Division of Literature and Languages please rise? Madam President, I present for the degree Bachelor of the Arts the candidates both present in an absentia of the Division of Literature and Languages. Upon the recommendation of the faculty of Reed College and by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees, I hereby confer upon the students of this division the degree of Bachelor of Arts with all the rights and privileges thereunto appertaining. Sub Sabrina Blasek. <laughs> Mia Carrillo. Carolyn Chen. Madeline Grace Moore Coleman. Ariel Rochelle Cooper. Ruby Kayla Margolf Culhane. Sage Rhiannon Doan. <laughs> Quinlan Kate Evans. <laughs> Rose Felzin. <laughs> Russell Dean Faust. Nina Gopaldas. <laughs> Jennifer Daria Hadavi. <laughs> Rebecca Hassi. <laughs> Corinna Jade Higginson. Veronica Siran Hua. <laughs> Madeline Huber. <laughs> Raul Juan de Cove. <laughs> Esme Kaplan Kinsey. Jordan Elizabeth Kapler. Zachary Casper. Henry Wyeth Kendrick. Juniper Gerelite. Kate Kufud Nielsen. <laughs> Catherine Hayne Lee. <laughs> Nathan Robert Lemon. Emma Astor Riskin. <laughs> Julie Branch Rogers. <laughs> Elizabeth Rollison. <laughs> Arlie Weller Sakai.
Alexander Polvot Soltes. <laughs> Leah Stevader. <laughs> Jane Tang. <laughs> Philip Versaloni. Rachel Vogel. <laughs> Jesse Rose Weiss. <laughs> Anna Wilson. Elizabeth Wing. Will the graduates please be seated? Will the candidates of the Division of Mathematical and Natural Sciences please rise? Madam President, I present for the degree of Bachelor of Arts the candidates both present and in absentia of the Division of Mathematical and Natural Sciences. Upon the recommendation of the faculty of Reed College and by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees, I hereby confer upon the students of this division the degree of Bachelor of Arts with all the rights and privileges thereunto appertaining. Apollo Albright. Sebastian Andrada Otonello. <laughs> Amalie Andreas. <laughs> Gush Aria. <laughs> Emily Celia Badner. Her by <laughs> Connor Bacart, <laughs> Josephine Olive Mackenzie Bicknell, <laughs> Taylor Bowen Blair. Lena Silty Bloom. <laughs> Molly Bohr. Andrew Richard Braham. Sean Renard Joseph Brown. Kenai Burton Hick Hickman. <laughs> David Beach Carlip. <laughs> Alice Catalan.
Cassandra Leon Catterton. Vivian Cheng Mengwei. Niels John Stigander Christofferson. Hannah Chubin. Adam Cohen. Samuel Kosha. Alexander Sebastian de Contreras. Jules May Dubell. B. Ellis. Sarah Ellis. Asa Wolf Ferguson. Madison Garfolo. Elisa Gasai. Anna Sue Godfrey. Lee Rome Goldenberg. Quinn Hargrove. Christopher Hayes. Henry Jacques. Alan Jessup. Vilmante Codite. April Kopek. Isabel Lawn. Ella Bird Lewis. Astrid Lilly. Erickson Liu Yan Chang. Xin Ran Liu. Carter Luck. Maxine Lucille Luddington. Ethan McBro. Ian McCourt. Unda Olive March. Asher Jane Marvey. Solis Tomas Juggernaut McLean. Mark McNamee.
Karn McQuiston. Kekilani Miller. Ollie Milstein. Ethan Langston Meyer. Serafima Nerush. Ngo Te Swan Tu. Lauren Annette Nicolaisen. Ainsley Norman. Gabrielle F. Ong Dean. Misha Ostrovsky. Hope Palmer. <laughs> Alessandra Isabella Pardini. <laughs> Sophia Pardo. <laughs> Ella Pasco. Anatalia Piatigorsky. Jackson Pilifont. Tina Teen. Gifford Asher Quinn. Calliope Selena Ryman. Max Richardson. Natalie Yume Rogers. Olive Ross. Kyle William Rowan. <laughs> Devinder Odell Sagu. <laughs> Riley Shahar. <laughs> Jacob Sharkonsky. Deepika Shingwaker. <laughs> Ava Esperon Sorgman. <laughs> Joshua Bernstein Spee. <laughs> Caroline Elizabeth Spiegel. Theodosia Stewart. <laughs> Joshua Stickel. <laughs> Mac Swicky. <laughs> Alexander William Tate.
Thomas Ulmer. Ting Wang. L. Wen Yu Hung. Shota Wetlison. Elijah Wheelock. Valerie Wu Yu Chan. Louise Xu Liu Yi. Matthew, Matthew Yurgo. Thomas Yoon. Austin Zeng. Guangyi Zhang. Will the graduates please be seated? Will the candidates of the Division of Philosophy, Religion, Psychology, and Linguistics please rise? Madam President, I present for the degree of Bachelor of Arts the candidates, both present and in absentia, of the Division of Philosophy, Religion, Psychology, and Linguistics. Upon the recommendation of the faculty of Reed College and by the virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees, I hereby confer upon the students of this division the degree of Bachelor of Arts with all the rights and privileges thereunto appertaining. And Angelina Jade Araya Cardi. Margot Becker. Victoria Ann Bolt. Leandra Wynn Brugink. Erin Carver Buchanan. <laughs> Ke Nan Chen. <laughs> Holden Curtin. <laughs> Emma Dillon. Teresa Marie Lane Elliott. Jordan Gifford Faragala. Haley Fazio. Finley Firth. Eli Franz. Asher Fritz. Woo! 
Aaron Gitten. Guido Sebastian Gonzalez. Alyssa Gorkin. Zev Grossman. Nirashan Guarino. Xin Yi Guo. Logan Hanrahan. Kayla Jackson. Lena Kassen. Leo Latimer. Dylan Mabbitt. Leslie Monroy. Yeah, Roan Emmett Pluta. Yeah. Harlan Quintana. Yeah. Olivia Ruth Ramberg Gomez. Ian Roberts. Miles Dillard Sanford. Azure Sensabaugh. Ian Smith. Maya Star Lack. Atlas Trucksaw. Shardul Vijay. Rhiannon Lilafay Weekly. Maximilian Wink. Myrtle Eagles Wood Pavisich. Simon Xu. Iris Zhang. Will the graduates please be seated? Will the candidates who have completed interdisciplinary majors please rise? Madam President, I present for the degree of Bachelor of Arts the candidates both present and in absentia, who have completed interdisciplinary majors. Upon the recommendation of the faculty of Reed College, and by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees, I hereby confer upon these candidates the degree of Bachelor of Arts 
with all the rights and privileges thereunto appertaining. Shalra Azim. <laughs> Katia Began. Max Bennett. <laughs> Molly Brownson. <laughs> Emma Campbell. <laughs> Lorraine Cotting. Gustavus Compton. <laughs> Thomas Cowles. <laughs> Sarah Elizabeth Darcy. <laughs> Helena Dobietska. Vic Dudik Tipton. <laughs> Siraj Faruqi. <laughs> Louis Madeline Grant. <laughs> Asia Rahman Guzman. Sarah Susan Helmstetter. <laughs> Mia Kim Huynh. <laughs> Hannah Alyssa Kaba. Talula Rain Knight. <laughs> Harper Lethen. <laughs> Evelyn Mary Lewis. <laughs> Naya Martin. Yuna Myakov. <laughs> Finn Christopher Newman. <laughs> Mads Osler. <laughs> Isidra Lopez Pachkowski. Bridget Maeve Perrier. <laughs> Avantika Rajendran. <laughs> Emerson Schimmel. <laughs> Margot Schweitzer. Lily Gabriel Simon. Brandon Bao Chung. Margot Waldman. Isabella Warner. Milo J. Weatherall. Yeah! 
Arai Varela Wilkerson and Coffee. Ava Willis. Kaylin Wolf. Catherine Zix. Will the graduates please be seated? Will the candidates for the degree of Master of Arts in Liberal Studies please rise? Madam President, I present for the degree of Master of Arts in Liberal Studies the candidates, both present and in absentia, for the degree of Master of Arts in Liberal Studies. Upon the recommendation of the faculty of Reed College and by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees, I hereby confer upon the candidates the degree of Master of Arts with all the rights and privileges thereunto appertaining. Susan Callahan. <laughs> Emma Holland. Will the graduates please be seated? And now I invite your applause for the class of 2024.